Yeah. I'm Robson Grieve. I'm the CMO at OutSystems. I don't get to come to Cor Portugal very much because of everything that's happened in the world, but I finally got here after a year and a half and I get to spend some time with Paulo uh, finally. And uh, we need to talk about tech debt. You know, we've been doing this, uh, we just launched this big campaign uh, about stop tech debt. And uh, it's because we've discovered this is financially a huge problem for companies. It's a, it, it costs them a lot. I want to hear about from your perspective as a lifelong engineer is where does tech debt come from? Well, it's uh, tech debt comes out of uh, of the fact that uh, whenever you build a piece of software, when you add something that uh, that's unique to you, you have you have to write software, you have to put rules, you have to do a bunch of stuff. And what happens is that uh, certain uh, things happen. One of them is that the business evolves, and so you have to constantly do changes, and you hack more rules or you change the software. Developers change, and so you you created all these things that now someone else comes in and needs to understand so that they can make a change without breaking something else or firing some rule that you don't realize. And finally, the, the stack underneath and the, the capabilities of, uh, of the software basically just uh, run out and you need to re-platform or replace. A lot of people think of tech debt as uh, coming from old systems. Is that true or does it also come from new things? It's, it's interesting now that there is a, a new generation of technical debt created by heavy customization of SaaS products like cloud uh, service products. And so you have now these platforms where you've added so many rules over a couple of years that now the system has become so heavily customized that it's extremely difficult for you to rationalize it and uh, to make it without a huge technical debt removal project. Another uh, big area has to do with mobile apps, for instance. Mobile apps, because of the dependency on the technology stacks, and the constant changes in the platforms, uh, the phones, uh, the browser technologies uh, coming in and out, like uh, Angular and then React and then Flutter and then Swift and then uh, you, all these technologies uh, and the fact that the developers are shifting and changing very, very rapidly, you build all these bodies of, uh, of software that people uh, at a certain point are so difficult to, to maintain that the alternative is throw it away and rewrite Just it. Just restart. And, uh, yeah, yeah, and restart. So yeah. it's not only about heavily customized ERP systems like in the past or a lot of COBOL or Java bodies of software. Now there's, there's this new SaaS Pro, SaaS customization model apps. It's probably where we yeah. see it, the latest technical that way. So this is a problem you've known about for a long time and we've been working on at OutSystems to make, make uh, a real difference in this. How, do, how, do, how does OutSystems approach this for customers? We look into the anatomy of, uh, of that and, and the trick here is that uh, you, you look, for instance, into the, the, the technology stack dependency, which is a huge portion of technical debt. And one of the things we do, we use this decoupled architecture where the thing that develops is, is kind of isolated from the technology stack so that we can change the technology stack without having to change the app. So that's one of the things. Yeah. But the second one, probably as important or more important, is that we have kind of fixed the knowledge transfer problem is a major issue with the a developer doing something living, and then someone new comes in that needs to make a change and he doesn't understand what's there. Because we use this visual modeling language, extremely high level, very powerful, but very easy to understand, we in fact don't have uh, orphan code. We can basically have someone, a newbie come in, into a very complex app, stay there for some, for, for a couple of days, two, yeah. three days, depending on the size of the software, and then he understands it, reverse engineering, and can make a change. And that dramatically erodes and compresses uh, technical debt to a point where it's it's maintainable. Yeah. I mean, we don't remove it completely, yeah. but the percentage, yeah. we lower it to such a low level that we make it possible. Yeah. AI does a lot of great stuff because it can look at all those patterns and detect redundancies, suggest refactoring, which is one of the ways you deal yeah. with uh, with technical debt, and uh, and actually suggest you removing that code yeah. and, and stuff. And it helps you actually it further enhances your capacity to understand what's there, which is a major issue in lowering the cost of correcting that debt. Awesome. All right, Paul, it's been great to talk to you, man. Uh, good to see you too here in Portugal. Uh, oh. StopTechDebt.com is uh, where you can find more information about this. Uh, and we've got lots of events coming up. Hopefully you can join us for one of those and we can tackle this tech debt problem with you. Yeah, thank you, Robson. Right All right. That was great. <laughs>